Okay, she, you can hear me in the back? This works. Well, thank you for all coming here. And um, it's extraordinary for us. We're starting our fifth season here. And I couldn't think of a better way to be a gallerist than to have this show. Um, we've been planning it for a long time. Uh, Livy and I were in Austria for three days. And this is the culmination of a lot of planning. Um, I'm not going to talk about Aaron's work. We have three experts, but just that for us, uh, this is a high point of what we do. Um, we want to thank everybody, and Tim is going to give us a couple words about our guest critics. Hello. We couldn't be more excited to have these three brilliant thinkers here. If all three have done a ton of things, so I had to make some notes, so I just missed a few things. Uh, Robert C. Morgan is in the middle here. He's a writer, artist, and professor. Perhaps most notably, he's the first American critic to have books published and translated in both China and Iran since their revolutions. Paul Lasker is right next to me here. He's the New York Desk Editor at Art Asia Pacific, a contributor editor at Flat Magazine, White Hat Magazine of Contemporary Art, Art Brain, and a frequent contributing writer for Time Out New York, The New York Observer, Modern Painters, and many others. Jonathan Goodman has been a teacher at Pratt Institute for 17 years. He writes for Art Critical, The Brooklyn Rail, Sculpture, among many others, and he has a strong interest in contemporary German art. With that, I'll hand it over to Robert. Thank you, Tim, for the introduction, and Mark for your comments, and uh, Livia for your presence. It's uh, so great to be with the, the two of you, and Rita and Herman, this is a great pleasure for me to have both of you here tonight to, uh, to join us. And uh, if, Herman, if I get something wrong, you have to correct me, okay? Even if you have to nudge Rita, you know, we, 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 we're in, we've got to get the truth here, and so I, I don't want to say something that... Uh, maybe misleading. Uh, the last time I spoke about your work was, I think, four years ago in Napoli at the, uh, uh, get, get ready, the Musée Nietzsche. Museo Nietzsche. Yeah, am I correct? <laughs> where, where is the third museum now? There's a, a new one that just. Uh, in uh, Chanakade, it's a memorial against the war in uh, okay. Okay. Turkey. Chanakade, yes, yes, I, I read about that recently. So Herman now has three major museums in Europe, which he most deserves. Okay, uh, it's a pleasure to be with Paul Glaster again and Jonathan Goodman. Uh, we were together previously for a panel, and our fourth member couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately, Donald Cuspid, which is uh, uh, too bad, because I always love to argue with Donald. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we will go ahead with, uh, with uh, the three of us. Now, uh, one of, one of the wonderful things about having a panel in the environ of the exhibition is that we feel the painting. It, 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 you know, in China, they don't just make this separation between form and content, but it's form, content, and spirit. And, you know, somehow I think that that Chinese idea overlaps with the paintings of Hermann Nietzsche. Uh, I believe that there is a, a kind of spirit that one feels in them, and some of that has to do with the fact that the blood and the pigment, uh, you could almost call the pigment a kind of uh, a simulation of what has happened in terms of the spilling of the blood, which is of course the essence of the idea in the work of uh, Hermann Nietzsche. Uh, I think that they are beautiful paintings, and I have to say the importance of Hermann Nietzsche cannot be underrated in the 21st century, where we are pulled away from the tactility and the haptic ways of behaving, we are being pulled away from memory, we are pull being pulled away from uh, a kind of human endurance, and you know, you can talk about that in many ways, but with Nietzsche, we get back to something that reminds us of 
uh, ancestry of going way back in time. And uh, at some point tonight, I'd like to remark on uh, Herman's interest uh, from years ago with the Gnostics and uh, the importance in terms of some of their beliefs in relation to his work. Uh, about, uh, I don't know, in 2004, there was going to be a uh, uh, malaction at the uh, Prinzendorf uh, estate of Nietzsche, and there was an interview uh, that was uh, being given to uh, Hermann Nietzsche, and the essence of the interview was, what makes your work political? And the very simple, poignant, and accurate response that Nietzsche gave was, I want to be free. I think that's about as political as you can get. Anyway, uh, I'm very interested in what our panelists have to say, and I'm going to first turn it over to Paul Laster and then to Jonathan Goodman. Um, well, I'm trying to remember when I first saw Herman Nietzsche's work, but uh, I guess it goes back to working at the Museum of Modern Art in, from 77 to 88 that I came across this work. But also then when I, I uh, started out as an artist and I showed it um, at the Greenberg Gallery in St. Louis. And when I went there, uh, Betsy and Irma Lard, who were big collectors um, in the region, and Betsy Millard was one of the founders of the Art Forum, which became the Contemporary Art Museum in St. Louis. And they had uh, Nietzsche's work all around their loft, including a big uh, ex expressionistic uh, performance painting over their bed, which made quite an impression on me. Um, but also, too, I, you know, I, I've always been someone that's been interested in movements that we didn't know about here in the United States so much, at the, at, at particularly in the 80s, like Nouveau Realism and Fluxus Art and, uh, and, and the Vienna Actionism, and uh, as well as then like Cobra and uh, other, the Zero Group and uh, other things that are coming into the forefront nowadays. And I think that it's really interesting that, uh, that Herman Nietzsche is not an artist that has ever gone away, but you know, the opportunity with all of this, of us in the art world looking back, and particularly in America looking back at other things that uh, maybe didn't have their uh, just view here in the United States, that now is a good time to be looking back at, at this type of work and, and, and seeing the relevance to how it's uh, inspirational to other things that came after it, like body art, performance art, and uh, you know, movements that do have a place here uh, in the United States. Thank you, Paul. John? Uh, hi. Uh, I think I'm going to start with almost a, per and a personal anecdote. Um, when I first saw uh, Herman Nietzsche's work, I didn't know what to make of it. Um, I was thrown off. Um, being a good American, uh, uh, trained academically, uh, and uh, having to see things through, through sort of uh, kind of pristine formalism, I didn't know what to make of all of this psychoanalytic content, and uh, uh, I was uncomfortable. Uh, however, uh, uh, I have, uh, I am, a, <laughs> I am a, a, a converted, uh, a converted believer uh, in the sense that um, I find him, uh, I find the Dionysian aspect of his work to be completely believable. And I was not sure of that until very, very recently when I started looking at some of the links to the performances that he was doing in Europe. And um, there is a kind of dignity and a kind of weightedness and gravitas to what he's doing that I think is remarkable. And I think, um, I think it lends uh, a, a sense of content as opposed to formality uh, to contemporary art in ways that we really need. Um, uh, and one of the things that, that I'm struck by is that these paintings are, are in a way an expression of pure content. They're sort of just the spilling of guts, the spilling of red paint, the spilling of black paint. And they're really remarkably beautiful and uh, remarkably improvised. Uh, at the same time, there is some control over them. Maybe. Maybe Mr. Nietzsche, uh, over the years, has become 
an expert as pour, at pouring paint, uh, uh, given, given, given the number of performances he's done. But more important, I think, is that uh, he knows how he knows both both sides of the coin. Uh, he was trained uh, at a very high level, if I'm correct, uh, at one of the graphic design uh, academies in, in Austria. Is that correct? And uh, uh, his his etchings and his drawings are remarkably controlled pieces of art. And this kind of control, in contrast to the kind of raw emotion, the, the, the sort of the, the, the purity of the heart that goes along with this, um, this sort of uh, uh, direction of, 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 uh, of, of, of a, a pure mentality, uh, along with the formalism, really seems to me to one justifies the other. And that combination of justifications where where uh, 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 aesthetic, aesthetic formalism is buoyed up and supported by, by uh, insight into emotional and spiritual depths that are very, very rarely reached or even accepted. We tend to be uncomfortable with it, I think, especially in America, which is one reason why I think uh, Nietzsche's, uh, Nietzsche's place in America is not fully established yet, although it should be. Uh, uh, I really think that that this combination uh, speaks to uh, uh, basic needs in, in, in the culture, and uh, you know, from what I mean, we uh, one thing I can say is that is that uh, for more than forty years I've been looking at the triumvirate of abstract expressionists, you know, Pollock, de Kooning, and Gorky, and the thing about Pollock is that he had his pulse on the unconscious, and um, he was doing it though in, in painterly terms. Whereas uh, someone like Mr. Nitsch is, is doing it in performance terms, in terms that are sacred even, and this notion of a, of a sacred performance, of uh, a ritual performance of, of meaningfulness uh, at a time in our culture where everything we're doing is distanced by both television and especially by the computer, uh, seems to me a really healthy corrective to, to the kind of um, superficial uh, experience that we often have now in contemporary art. One of the things that I can say is that as I read a couple years ago, is that, or even just a year ago, that someone wrote that we've been in a slump in contemporary art for the last 60 years. And when I see Mr. Nitsch's work, I don't believe that. I believe that he really has his uh, a direct connection with, with, um, with uh, a kind of uh, a spiritual beauty that uh, does not uh, reject uh, sort of strong feelings, strong emotions, um, uh, raw materials, and uh, things that are, 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 are maybe spiritually difficult, but nonetheless lend themselves to a spiritual outlook. Uh, thank you. I think one of the major points about Nietzsche's theater and the Gesamtkunstwerk of Wagner was extremely important at the outset of his career. I'm talking about the outset in the early 60s. And uh, relative to Paul Laster's comment uh, that there is a uh, long <coughs> retrospective glance that we have to take at the, of the work of Nietzsche because he was here in 1960 in New York. Uh, I have to say that recently there was a uh, dialogue, a wonderful and very informative dialogue between Nietzsche and uh, Jonas Mikas, uh, who were very much in touch at that time. And uh, Mikas was actually filming parts of that uh, first uh, Orgies Mystery Theater. Uh, my first connection to Nietzsche, I have to say, came through the happenings artist Alan Capro, uh, because during my dissertation years, quite a while back, uh, <clears throat> we were in touch with each other, and there were two people that uh, Capro would mention over and over. Uh, one was uh, uh, Nietzsche, and the other was the, uh, uh, the, the German uh, guy, uh, who worked very similar to Nam Jun Pak, uh, why am I slipping out his name, it's very important, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, this, uh, this theatrical aspect uh, is what leads to the paintings. 
we can talk about Pollock perhaps in terms of creating a choreography or a theater in the act of painting. But with Nietzsche, uh, <coughs> the paintings are really the emanation or the flow of the feeling uh, more than a relic. It's uh, something else. Uh, it's something that uh, points to the uh, to humanity in the sense of an interaction between people and animals, which are very important in terms of the world. Well, I think the what you were saying too about um, about uh, <coughs> Pollock, you know, that it's not directly related to that, although Pollock was certainly in his paintings as niches, but also E. Klein with the, uh, the, uh, the, the paintings that were made by the Impressions of Women's Bodies, by Engutai with Shiraga. I think this, this painting behind us is done uh, with uh, Nietzsche's feet. It's painted with his feet as this painting and this painting are painted with his hands. So that aspect of, you know, a relationship, I mean, and it's really, I find it really interesting in that, you know, that these were international movements that were going on at the same time, even though the Vienna Actionism wasn't necessarily a group, it was a group of artists that were pursuing similar interest um, within Austria, but they never considered themselves a, a group as like Zero did or Gutai did, they didn't, or Cobra. Um, but, you know, there's also that shamanism of voice as well that comes out in the performative aspect of, of what uh, uh, Nietzsche was doing, but also of like Chinese artists like Huang Ru, um, who does performances, and John Wan's early performances as well. I think that, you know, this whole, this whole nature of something that, you know, is a physical sense of creating something that's then just documented, and, and Nietzsche's performances were very well documented by uh, colleagues that were involved in experimental film in Austria at the time, um, and, 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 and through photography as well. So, you know, I mean, the, the paintings themselves become the, the end result of the performance, and that's what makes them so special, I think, because they're born of, a, of another nature. They're not born in the studio in the way that, uh, that other works might be conceived. But also, though, that they that they have this relationship to something that is is happening in, in real time, which I think also then leads to people like Mike Kelly and McCarthy, you know, like Paul McCarthy doing performances that were of this type of nature that were just like totally uncontrolled, um, you know, that they that they were or organ organ. Plastic, or, 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 or geastic. <laughs> I'm struggling with the word. My wife help me. <laughs> yeah. um, but <laughs> you know that 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 these that McCarthy's McCarthy's performances and Mike Kelly's performances, you know, they come out of this. <laughs> Her man's laughing. <laughs> but they come out of this type of thing. And if it wouldn't been for the documentation as well, then we wouldn't necessarily, I mean the documentation as you, you mentioned Alan Capro and, and Capro said that the, that performances only exist through the ephemera you know, that they that they live on through the documentation because and and um, uh, Barbara Moore and Peter Moore were good friends of mine, Barbara's uh, still with us and you know, uh, Peter Moore documented all the happenings in New York and stuff like that and the only way that we know about them is through through the photography. But then there's also um, artists that, that his work affected as well, like Valley Export, you know, who was doing feminist work, and also, like, I'd say, Carolee Scheman here. I don't know if, if Herman uh, knew Carolee yes. really? yeah, when he was uh, living in New York, but I'd say that she's someone that's very influenced by what uh, the Vienna Actionists uh, were doing as well. I think you knew Carolee's name in fairly early. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. But, but by the way, the German that uh, Capital is referring to is Wolf Bostel. I just happen to remember. Mm -hmm. We hardly ever hear his name. We ever hardly ever hear his Wolf name Bostel. in the United States. But he's such an important artist, yeah. I think, and comparable to Nam June Pike in many ways. Yeah. Uh, Dionysius. Uh, <laughs> I don't quite know what to say. Um, uh, Dionysian, Dionysian, uh, the Dionysian aspect um, 
goes way back to sort of uh, Greek mysteries and Greek religious mysteries, and uh, it's of course uh, it's of course uh, the opposite coin of Apollo, uh, Apollonian, and there is this sense of of, of a sacred sacred orgiastic uh, sense of uh, transgression of boundaries, and this transgression of boundaries is very powerful. Uh, it has a lot to do with social context and social rules. Um, we know that uh, uh, one of the things that's interesting about uh, Hermann Nietzsche is that he was imprisoned three times for what he did in Austria, occasioning his move to Germany for a number of years. And um, uh, Germans, I guess, have a, a little have a little more tolerance for going beyond boundaries than the Austrians do. Uh, why that is, I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, I guess what I want to say is that, is that uh, for me, and I think Paul made this point quite well, is that the paintings, that everything comes out of a sense of performance, and that the performance itself has to do with taking on boundaries and moving beyond them. And uh, uh, there is something kind of um, uh, mystical uh, in, 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 uh, in, 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 in a traditional sense. Uh, there's also something transgressive in a political and a social sense. And there's also something that's finally, in, in its own way, I would even say humble, in, in the sense that it, people are trying to connect uh, with the most basic fundamental emotions. And um, uh, one of the things that I was really struck by watching the movies of one of his relatively recent performances is how people were dressed in white, and, and white is, is, is often in a holy, a holy color for clothing, and how they would walk upon, they would walk on the on the paintings, and they would imprint their footprints, and um, uh, they, they, there was this uh, tremendous sense of, um, of, of, of um, being in the moment, and uh, occurring and existing in, in, in what is essentially a, a spiritual uh, relationship to the medium that went beyond spirituality into what, what I would say almost a pious religious. Usually we think of in modern and contemporary art spirituality. We don't tend to think of piety or doctrine. And this was a new kind of doctrine that I think is being introduced to us. And it's a doctrine that's based upon psychological insight in a Freudian sense. Um, uh, uh, and we know that Freudian, Freud took a lot of his stories about, about psychological issues from the classical Greeks and, 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 the, and, the, and the Greek plays and, and these, these, these moments of incredible emotional intensity that in which transgressions were, were revealed, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, I think the, the thing about, about, about uh, Nietzsche seeing his work is that he has this amazing calm while he's transgressing. And so when he pours the, when he pours the paint on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the paintings, um, there is this incredible control, uh, even though it's a transgressive act. And... Um, like all good art, uh, uh, the work sort of uh, uh, is composed of paradoxes and, and intuitions that, that are also analytic in nature. Um, I don't think we can underestimate the psychological issues that are involved, uh, but I think we have to see them as intuitive rather than uh, finally as analytic. And this goes against society because society has really made these intuitions analytic, uh, both in terms of you know, a sort of psychological culture in terms of in terms of the way we handle the material, but to approach it again from the se from the sense uh, from a sense of of, of of innocence and a sense of uh, a sense of not knowing what's going to happen next is really very beautiful to me. Jonathan, uh, I, I, I want to ask you about uh, this uh, initial. Uh, disorientation. I don't think you use that word. That's you, correct. That's that's a correct yeah, term. Yeah, uh, that you felt, and I think that perhaps a number of people uh, in the audience or elsewhere, uh, upon first seeing the work of Nietzsche, had a similar effect. And uh, what was it that that pulled you through that, where you began to see his work? from another angle of vision, shall we say, or to feel it on a different level. Maybe it was very visceral, I don't know, maybe you'll tell us. No, I think that's an excellent question. I think that's key to, to, the, way, to the way a lot of people might react at first to, to uh, Nietzsche's work. Um, my feeling is that, is that, uh, is that uh, in American uh, contemporary art culture, or modern culture, uh, you know, we've got to remember that, that uh, Mr. Nietzsche's career has been a long one 
and that it spanned uh, 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 a long, a long sort of uh, series of developments in America that don't have too much to do with the way he's been working. And so, so you have to stretch your imagination, I think, a little bit to to understand what he's doing. And um, you know, I, I'm I, I'm I was trained as a, uh, I wasn't trained for academically, but but the culture that I grew up in, uh, grew up in, and still remains, I think, uh, essentially a formalist one. Although there's been lots of attacks and inroads made upon that perception, and um, my feeling is is that someone like Hermann Nietzsche is is uh, is is completely different in his orientation, and it's coming out of a sort of a German language expressionism that is uh, very deep and very powerful and gut oriented and. Um, as a, as a teacher now, I keep telling my students, I say, and I, I'm, I'm, a real, I'm a survivor of all the uh, academic theories, uh, 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 that I keep saying, well, we're not here because of ideas. We're here probably because something hit us in the gut when we were growing up and, and, and art really made a difference to us. And I think that, I think that, uh, that our training has distanced us uh, from our, ourselves from that kind of emotional approach to art. Um, I don't want to go on about emotionalism for its own sake. I don't think that's a healthy uh, correlative to, to the kind of overly intellectual perception that we have a lot in art today. But I will say this, is that, is that Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's um, directness of emotion and directness of, of uh, uh, thonic uh, uh, perception of, 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 of meaningfulness, uh, especially in the materials. Uh, uh, I think Paul was taught, and, and, and both Paul and and Robert, we're talking about the, this, the, 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 the paint, the blood in the paint, uh, the, ritual, uh, the ritual use of, of slaughtered animals. All these things add up to a kind of a, a physical reality that, uh, that we're not very used to in American contemporary art culture. And so I was uncomfortable with it, uh, not, not because Nietzsche was wrong, but because I was, I, it wasn't, and it wasn't even that I was wrong. I didn't have the experience of seeing this work and, 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 and working it through me. Uh, and once I started to see it uh, as, as, as in its own right, I was really able to appreciate it for what it is. And uh, we have to allow for the fact that this is a ritual, uh, almost religious uh, uh, refastening of primal emotions that uh, are not going to go away because of our unconscious. And these, these basic emotions are, are so powerful that um, we, 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 we have to acknowledge them. And to his credit, Nietzsche has done that for, for more than half a century. Robert, should I bring him up? Can I bring him up here? Sure, absolutely. Set it up. Okay, uh, Herman is going to join the panel. And, uh, and we're going to have time for questions. I wonder if I have a chance to say something. I'm going to spring something on Olivia. I wonder, as a theologian, if you would like to address the work. And our relationship to the work is very different. We, um, we come to this work almost 50 years as collectors. And Livy and I are graced with a 1962 painting. And you know, over a period of time, what holds in your life. And this is one of those things you want your space all the time, as it's been for decades. Did you want to say something? Um, maybe let her mom speak first. <laughs> okay. What shall I Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm very proud that so clever people speak about my work. <laughs> Normally, I wrote books about my theory, and a little group of people read it. Mm -hmm. And now it changed. 
other people speak about my work. And this makes me happy. <laughs> and uh, I would say, I have, I have nothing to say. Everything was right for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I did the right with my work. This, I can yeah, this is a little difficult with my English. Uh, my uh, wife wants that if a buddy won't ask me, he shall ask me. Let's make a proof. Uh, but when I am tired, we stop and then I will give it. Any question first? Got all those degrees in theology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was fascinated by what all of you were saying um, because I think that when people look at the work, they take it in from their own backgrounds, from their own memories. Um, that's what connects you to art. That's what makes art so so important to you. And when I look at your art, it's so much about. Um, the roots, as you said before, Paul, of religion. It's the roots of theology and before that. And some people look at it, they look at the performances, the theater of mysteries, and they say, oh, this is, this is terrible. But when you, you think about the history of, of ritual sacrifices, the history of religion, this is what it was about. It was about the animal taking the place and purging the person of their sins through the use of their blood. The blood was the lifeline. And people who look at the work have to keep that in mind, that that's part of the history of humankind. It's not that you're coming in and saying something that's devoid of what civilization has been about for millennia. This is who we are as human beings. I, I agree. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with all old friends and uh, Herman and Rita, it's a good friends of mine. And we've done a lot of trips together. And I, I want to talk about religion because it's a very funny story. Uh, Herman each came with me to Israel. So we were like 100 people on the plane. They asked everybody questions. They almost arrested Mike Weiss and we went to the quarter, <laughs> to, the, to the wall in one. And they call him the Messiah. The big rabbi of the of the, the wall came and hugged him. You have to understand what is the karma and, and, and energy, what's happening in the quarter. Everybody was stepped down. It was a memorable day that I will never forget in my life. So so I brought him in. He said, please, you are not Jewish. You cannot be here. They told me I'm not Jewish. And they put me in a side. And they took him, the head of the rabbi of the quarter, and hugged him and prayed with him like a three or hours. He didn't understand any word, but he win, he win everybody. If they know about the blood and all the stuff, they will not know what to do in that moment. But that was the best moment. And we are together. That's great. Uh, I have, I, I've heard this story. It's a fantastic story. Let me just say one more thing before we go to the questions. One thing it's important to understand about these uh, these performances that at the Schloss in Prinzendorf is it's not just the spilling of the entrails, it's the nature, it's the music that Herbert that, that Herman sorry that Herman composes. Herman com has composed a lot of music that is played during the time that these events are going on, and he 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 has this way of of making the sound relate to nature. It's a phenomenon. Truly a phenomenon, and that's something that you might not know coming into the gallery and seeing these paintings on the wall. But what what I'm trying to emphasize or re-emphasize is that these paintings, there's so much behind them, experientially, in terms of the artist reaching down deep and pulling this out. And some of the points that Livia was making, I think, are absolutely true. That you know, if the artist is willing to go deeply enough within himself, he becomes universal, okay? And one of the mistakes I think we make in this country is everybody's reaching for signs outside of some kind of identity that's in the stratosphere. 
is not out there. It's somewhere down deep. And this is what is so refreshing about this exhibition. Uh, OK, let's get some questions. Uh, I'm sure there are some. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah. Thank you very much for okay. the chance. Oh. Uh, I think that's really true. Uh, for me, it was always important that my art is uh, very full of intensity, and this intensity goes very deep, and uh, this intensity means being. I want to show. Uh, uh, when I paint, um, I want to show these paintings when I am here. Most of the people around the world are not really here. They are lukewarm and aggressive, but not intensive. Mm. And I, my work, uh, my theater, and my paintings shall be a, a school of life, a school of intensive, true life with our senses. And so I would say we, we go deep and we go in the direction where is going our creation, where uh, the development of meat woods. Uh, I want to show the real creation uh, uh, with a deeper and with a more intensive view as it normal is. And I have to say, I'm against politic. I'm against every kind of politic. This is much too short and has nothing to do with philosophy and religion. Good. Good. Great. Okay. Um, Wonderful, Herman. Thank you for that remark. I think it's important. I, I would like to say something. Sure, of course. Uh, Eileen Kaminsky. Hi, everyone. I've been collecting Herman for many years. Um, while I have studied religion in college, to me, the works are not religious. And unfortunately, while, while I was at an action um, painting event, um, I have never been to, unfortunately, one of your religious events, one of the Mao... Action. Uh, for me, the paintings are alive. When, when I look at these paintings, um, and, and at the beginning, I didn't get very close. So maybe what I'm saying is sacrilegious to you. <laughs> because I realize that you're pulling out from your soul. But when I look at these paintings, they reach into me, and I see movement. And I, I look at them, and, and I collect figuration. For me, it's all about uh, the body and the people interacting. Well, I see people interacting. I, I see figuration in these paintings. For me, there's, there's a, a whole group of people dancing, and, and the sky above them is erupting, and this is the water. And, and for me, the paintings are alive. So I, I know the, the religious aspect doesn't affect me in my enjoyment. I, I come from a homogenized community. We are separated from the animals. We buy food, and it is in packages. There is no blood in anything, <laughs> right? Right, we go into the supermarket. Do, do you know what a cow looks like anymore? Do, so, so uh, for me, it's a, it's on a totally different level. So I, I appreciate what you're all saying, and and I'm gratified that you can reach down into your soul. But for me, they take on a life of their own. I, I, I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, yeah, let, let's get yeah, somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't need the mic. I'm pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a question about the 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 importance and the symbolism of. And, and I'm looking at the the piece of clothing here, and I'm thinking a robe or a costume or a vestment, um, all of which imply completely different things. And you can't ignore the shape um, that you use when you 
in place that, which is somewhat ritualistically limiting, but I don't think that it's in necessarily intended to be so. So I'm wondering if you can give me some guidance on the, the role that the, the vestments play um, and the way you've chosen to shape them. Uh, when people we ask about the means of that, uh, which <coughs> you need, uh, uh, which, uh, which symbol you are meaning, I say, everything is that what it is. Mm. If you see symbols in it... See, this is why the rabbis so, like it. <laughs> See, and this is uh, uh, the shirt we have to shirt. The shirt I had, I wear when I'm working. And sometimes I keep it on the picture. But uh, uh, for me it was very important uh, uh, during the development uh, from my work. I, I play with symbols, but I never say that is a symbol for something. Uh, uh, I use very often in my performances uh, paper handkerchief and uh, sugar cubes. And people always ask me, it's the first question. What do you mean with uh, uh, with a paper handkerchief? And what do you mean uh, with the sugar? And I always say that it is that is what it is. <laughs> and yeah, then there is a possibility to find symbols. Uh, the sugar connected. Uh, the holy bread, uh, uh, then sugar is sweet, uh, then the handkerchief uh, has to do with hygiene and, and so on. And in reality, I mean, it's a little bit like the architecture in my work. But, and always all the symbols find the people. And I know which symbols they will find when I do my work. But I never say, oh, the thing um, uh, uh, with uh, the sheep. Uh, normally it is Jesus Christ. For me, the sheep is the sheep. Nothing yeah. else. <laughs> And there is also nothing to do with the Jewish religion. The sheep is a sheep, but when you have the association to the Jewish religion, why not? So. Thank you. Ah, but if I have to say something to you. Uh, what is religion? Uh, re, um, the word of religion, or let's say the begrif, the has to be grief. Uh, huh? Sentiment. No, no. Uh, in uh, religion is changing. There's a, the old religion and then maybe we find this our doing a new kind of religion. It is possible, but it maybe it changed so much that it has with the old religion nothing to do. This I want to say. As a religion can yeah, can change. Uh, um, uh, very well, Heidegger he also speaks very often of being. And for him, is uh, being a kind of God. And uh, to feel intensive being can 
be a kind of religion. Which is what you said for it seems to me that the basis of religion has to do something with very deep experience, Herman, which you were talking about earlier, and also the necessity of ritual. Experience and ritual are the essential ingredients. I don't know how you intellectually develop a religion, and I know that's not what you meant. I know that you're talking about what is at the basic level of need in terms of human beings from which whatever new religion may arise will arise. Do you agree? I would say I, I, would say I agree and uh, uh, some minutes before I said I want to make with my work uh, a very deep uh, a very deep theater, and the theater shall go very deep to the roots of being, to the uh, to the ground power of being, and it's not necessary to use. It's not necessary to use. Uh, when I had the feeling, I had, from the roots of being, uh, the, I feel the roots of being, that's for me also religion. Yeah. I hope we say the same. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was anxious to say something. Yes, go ahead. A couple of questions, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Norm? Um, I would, well, first of all, it's an honor to uh, to be here and to, to hear you speak about the work. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I was recently at the Museo Nietzsche in, in Naples. No. Oh. And, um, you know, I got to see a real a real wide selection of, of work from, hmm. you know, the early days to present. And um, one of the things that I absorbed being there was I had a similar reaction at first. I mean, the first time I saw your work, I was a little horrified and shocked as an American, someone looking at insides shown outside. And, um, you know, upon investigating the work further, I actually didn't necessarily have a religious connotation that I associated with the work but really something more about the internal workings of the body that kind of this discovery, this process of discovering <coughs> what equals life. You know, the process of life itself. And for me, when I saw the sugar cubes and I saw the handkerchiefs, I thought, this is what, this is the body. This is a portrait. Because it's about, okay. it's about, okay. like, yeah. You're right. <laughs> is there a question? <laughs> All right, my name is Christopher Smith, and um, I was just wondering, uh, considering the experiential nature of the work, are the paintings sort of like an archive of that performance, and um, is like a performance necessary to sort of like, or can you paint them without, you know, experiencing something? <coughs> I would say the performance, let's say my theater, my artist, mysterious theater, is um, the, the basic of my work. Uh, and uh, the basic of my work is tragedy, drama, and movement, action. And here you have also theater. See it on the canvas, and the intensity of my, of the feeling of my senses uh, with the color is seismo, uh, seismography. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. This painting is necessary. They are the first step 
of my consciously stare to see and know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just one more comment about the work. We've come to artists so many times towards the beginning of their career, and now we've had a long chance to follow what they do. There's some brilliant things you see early on. I'm almost at a loss to know any artist with this consistency, and now we have 50 years. So this show, which um, we, we've chosen work uh, over a period of almost 40 years, and I don't think you can separate the great ones, whether they're early or late. He's been unrelenting for his whole career, and thank you, it's in the show. And I want to thank these extraordinary three people who This is what it is to do what you do so well. Thank you. We have a, a small reception upstairs, and if you haven't seen the work upstairs, you must. So thank everybody for coming, and thank you for having, letting us do the show. Thank <laughs> you.